Well, we are here for our ecosystem influencer segment of the Economic Inclusion Conference at Coppin 2022. And this segment is, the purpose of it is to highlight uh, some of the real ecosystem influencers in the entrepreneurial ecosystem in Baltimore. And I'm very happy uh, to have with us my good friend, Michael Rosenband, who I've known for a number of years and who is really a, a, a major influencer and contributor in West Baltimore. So Michael, welcome. Welcome to the Economic Inclusion Conference. How are you? I'm, I'm wonderful, Ron. Thank you. It is uh, truly an honor to be here and be a part of this. It's wonderful work that you're doing. So I'm, I'm grateful for this uh, opportunity to share. Well, we, we're very, very happy and, and grateful for the, the things that you're doing in West Baltimore. Uh, we met several years ago uh, I, at Coppin, and I became aware of uh, your presence at Carver High School and uh, some of the work that you were doing there. Very impressed with that work, and you've been committed over a number of years. Can you tell us about your engagement at Carver and how that came to be? Sure, sure. Thank you. Uh, so I um, came to Baltimore by way of New York City, and I was, um, after a, a, a career in, in finance, I had uh, volunteered to coach uh, football at a vocational high school in the South Bronx. And through that experience, it, it, it occurred to me that it seemed like we could do a better job as a society um, bridging the gap with what we're teaching our young people with what's needed in the marketplace. And so I came to Baltimore and I repeated that process uh, as authentically as I could, became a volunteer football coach at Carver in West Baltimore, which, you know, as you know, is an, an incredibly historic school. It's the oldest historically Black vocational high school in Maryland and the third oldest in the country. And similarly, when I got here, I realized that, again, there was opportunity with what we could do in terms of um, what we're teaching, what we can do to augment the teaching and learnings that are happening at Carver to make our young people, our young talent, um, more marketable um, in the workforce. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I uh, became the baseball coach um, in a more official capacity, and uh, there were inherent challenges. There was no uh, field on campus, no budget. And so what that did was create an opportunity for students uh, to be involved in some of this uh, problem solving uh, in order to, to play the sport that they've uh, signed up for. And, and through that, we realized that with the right resources, curating the right opportunities, that students can uh, self-actualize and, and you can in fact complement what they're learning um, in school with some real world uh, opportunities outside of it. Mm -hmm. for, just for context, what year was that when you engaged with Carver? So I came, so 2011 um, was the 2011-2012 the school year. So I've been, I've been uh, uh, a part I can say, uh, you know, the community for over a decade now, and um, it's been uh, in my professional life, I I've, have not found anything more rewarding or engaging or inspiring. Well, that, that, that's incredible. And um, I wanted the, the conference participants to get a sense of, of your commitment and the number of years that you have been engaged there. And I'm glad that you shared uh, some of the historic facts about Carver High School is one of the high schools that's in the West Baltimore footprint, very close to Coppin State University and one that uh, we have an ongoing relationship with. And a number of Carver students have also been uh, matriculated at Coppin and um, uh, been graduates of Coppin State University. Can you say a little bit more about uh, the gap uh, in terms of te technical education and the education that's being received and the, the, the skills that are necessary uh, in the marketplace to be successful. What are yes. some of your observations about that? Yes, so there was a study done by the Fund for Educational Excellence in February of 2019, so pre-pandemic, uh, but it found that, that graduates of Baltimore City vocational programs, there are 1,500 students that graduate every year from Baltimore City vocational programs, six years out can expect to earn $13,000 a year. So that is obviously not in the trades that they're studying. It's part-time work. It's medium wage work. 
And uh, what the study also found was that part of the reason they're not getting jobs is that there is a lack of specific experience, hands-on work-based learning experience that um, when the students are arriving at specific pathways that they're just not properly prepared for. So while they're getting the education inside the school, there isn't the kind of context that the students need to apply what they're learning to the real world. And so we recognize that as a, as a gap and that's something that we needed to do to break down barriers to make students to connect with the vocational schools and also understand in the marketplace what some of these challenges are and to serve in the middle to try to address those. Um, your organization, uh, Requity, Requity, Requity Foundation, um, can you tell us about that and uh, how your organization is helping to, to close that gap or to bridge the gap between the market demands and the skills that uh, the students have? Yes, thank you. So I think the best way to do that is to talk about this initial pilot project that we have. So Requity Foundation is a 501c3, a nonprofit. And so part of that is trying to figure out the right investment we want to have in order to make this worthwhile. So it's a combination of the public dollars that we can access, as well as the individual contributions, foundational dollars to really uh, treat this pilot project in the way that it needs to be to have the right investment. And so this particular initial pilot project is called the Carver House. And it was actually a name that came out of, of the student body. Um, but what we've done essentially is acquired a vacant house that is directly across the street from Carver. Um, on the Pressman block, there are 15 houses and five of them are, are vacant. And so what we are doing with this specific house is saying, okay, we know that this house is dilapidating and needs to be renovated, which addresses blight. Uh, at the same time, it gives our students in the different construction trades, carpentry, masonry, electrical, construction aid to design, a real life opportunity to first apply their trades, but also we talked about the contextualization before, there's also an understanding of what our classmates are doing. So when your friend is in construction aid to design, he or she or they are creating the drawings for carpentry. And so there's a, there's a real interconnectedness and an understanding of how we all work together. We talked about the ecosystem in the beginning. And so the idea is if we can figure out how to do this initial house, then there are, there are plenty more to do. And at the same time, we want to also work with Carver to understand what are the particular areas that we might need to press on, on the school to provide some additional educational support. So for example, construction math, maybe we need to spend a little bit more time in construction math. So when we get the students, there's a basic um, fundamental education that they have that we're going to work to build on. And then from the, the, the marketplace side, we want to work with the marketplace to understand, okay, what are some of the reasons that our students in Baltimore City aren't getting hired? And then we can start to address those. So whether that's um, some life skill coaching, some job readiness coaching. And so we really want to sit in the middle between the school system and the marketplace and figure out and take away excuses from both sides to make sure that our young people are prepared um, uh, for pathways. You know, I, I love your, um, your, the way you frame your work. And anyone uh, who wants to learn more about it uh, certainly can go to your website. And can you give us that very quickly? Yes, yes. So it's, it's, Requity, www.requity, and requity is equity with an R in front of it, .org. Okay, .org. So you can go to that website, but I love the way you frame your work, uh, building skills, building homes, and building community. Uh, and the, the relationship or the connection between those three, of course, um, you know, technical skills are, are necessary and very valuable in the workplace. And there is a, a tremendous gap and perhaps a growing gap, a skills gap in terms of what the workforce is demanding. The, the, the need for um, eradicating blight and uh, building affordable housing. Uh, so that, that's, that's a need that those who have those skills can help to meet. But then that third piece, 
um, I think is important. And, and that's why I love the way you frame your work. Building community. Can you can you just say a few words about how those three components fit together and what the value of the outcome is when it works well? Yes. And I, so I think I'd, I'd like to start with community. And I, I'm, orig I'm not originally from Baltimore. And so I um, personally have had to work hard and make mistakes and upset people to understand what authentic community engagement is. And so as we do our work, we like to think about how do we frame that? What, do, what, what are the role of neighborhood associations? What are the role of block captains? When do, when do block captains convene? When do neighborhood associations convene? What's the right kind of information that you need to have prepared? Um, because I, 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 as, even though I've been here a decade, you know, I'm still, I'm not from Baltimore. And so it is very important to really understand what authentic community engagement is. And that is an, under, an empathic understanding. So while we're uh, looking to address a vacant dilapidating houses, my neighbor to the right is trying to raise a family next to this home. And so it's, 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 it's an, an, an understanding of empathy. And so that is critical to the work that we are doing. And then um, from that, it's it's very a very pragmatic look. We're saying, okay, we have we're learning specific skills at Carver, um, and we need to complement those specific skills or augment those specific skills that are what's being asked of in the marketplace. And so our job is to make sure that in concert with community, building and 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 renovating this house at a pace that is working with students so that they are in fact learning and able to make mistakes and at the same time communicating with community what we are trying to do and to always have that communication and that open form and that open dialogue in in place and again that not that we're you know not going to make mistakes along the way but it's just important to again to have that open form and to continue to communicate well i i, I believe that building authentic community, authentic community is always a work in progress. Yes. It's, 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 um, it's a process and you never get to a place where you can stop working on it or a place where you are mistake free. Yes. Um, you know, those interpersonals and that the, the empathic connections that you, that you need to make, um, there are, we're always working on those, um, can you tell us about perhaps, you know, you've been engaged at Carver for a decade. Uh, you had the Recordy Project. Uh, you talked about the Carver House. But talk about some of your, your success stories over the, over the, over the decade. And uh, perhaps even, even though this is in the early stages, what about some success stories you, uh, with Recordy? So we... We've been focused on work-based learning at Carver for, for some time. Um, our, our, the, 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 the initial driver was re recreational equity. I, mean, I initially talked about um, the baseball team not having our own field. And so our, our field is at Leon Day Park. And so there were several issues around Leon Park. There were no bleachers. Um, there were holes in the fences. There was a, a Leon Day uh, sign, which is a, a Hall of Famer that we've come to know and celebrate that had um, had. Uh, uh, it was no longer readable. And so um, we worked together with the business schools, trade students to come up with a proposal to submit to rec and parks to invest back in the park. We also um, invested in the Easterwood Park, which is a neighborhood park. We realized that this wasn't a place that was big enough for us, but we were able to, to renovate um, the two fields with benefited James Moser and historic Little League down the field and also the Carver um, softball team. Um, I, I personally have, have um, been able to do some work more south of West Baltimore um, with Bon Secor. We've been able to address um, food access issues. We took um, uh, a quarter acre of land and built uh, an urban farm on it that's been functioning now since 2017, serving 300 um, families every other week with fresh produce. Um, but there's, there's obviously uh, no shortage of tremendous opportunities. And so um, we, we continue to work. Um, this Carver House is our focus. This past summer, we were able to um, secure funding from the Maryland Department of Education for an innovation grant where we worked with five Baltimore City um, public high school vocational students to design and prototype prototype a high performance door that's going to go specifically to the Carver House. But they can always have an eye on 
you know, why, why can't this happen in West Baltimore? Why can't we be entrepreneurial in West Baltimore? Why can't we take these products to market in West Baltimore? So um, that's an important piece too, is that we all we always want to be thinking like entrepreneurs um, in, in addition to, um, uh, into, into getting us prepared for the workforce. Yeah, well, well thank you. And, and we're in our last minute, believe it or not, you know, these ecosystem influencer segments are really designed to give uh, our, our conference attendees um, uh, just a, a glimpse and really a taste of some of the things that are happening and uh, hopefully to build their appetite to, to get to know more. So how do people uh, contact you if they want to find out more about Recordy? How do they do that? I would love that, first of all. So my, uh, my, you can welcome to contact me. My email is michael at requity.org, M-I-C-H-A-E-L at requity.org. Um, you're happy to call or text. My phone number is 646-249-0437. Um, there's a tremendous amount of opportunity with this particular project, and we're looking um, for talent and people to contribute. So please, I welcome, I welcome um, uh, your input and involvement. Yeah. Well, th thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate the work that you have done, that you continue to do, and I'm sure that you'll do in the future. Uh, and thank you so much for being a part of our ecosystem influencers uh, segment at the Economic Inclusion Conference at Coppin. Thank you so much, Michael. Looking forward to working with you in the future. Thank you again, and it is an honor.